join me today. Um, this week I am back to working on my canvas and painting, but if you want to color along, go ahead and go to the email and print out the picture. But we're going to go ahead and get started. The picture you see right now is the final product that we will have today. Alright guys, let's get started. So this week we've been learning about the banquet, right? And what thing that you can't have a banquet without? Food, right? And so this week, I've like really thought about it and I'm like, what food did they always have? They always had grapes and I love grapes personally. I think they're really fun to crunch and so we are going to draw some grapes today. So first off, we're gonna start with our brown colors because we're gonna do a table first. Um, I'm gonna get my dark brown and just put a little bit on my palette just because we are going to be doing a lot of blending for the table. So we're going to get this on my angled big brush and about a little less than halfway we're just going to go ahead and draw the table line like so. Perfect. Get a little more right here. Whenever you're painting things and working on shading, you want the darker thing to be in the back because the back is always darker and it gives it more of a 3D look versus the 2D look that normally comes with painting the picture. And so we're going to go ahead and come down and just bring the paint. And something that helps spread the paint is adding water, but just a little bit. Not too much that it's like super drippy and it just drips down the entire canvas. You just want a little bit of water on your brush to help spread the color so you're not using too much paint, right? I don't know if I got it. <laughs> oh, that was too much. And that was an example of too much water. So I just gotta spread it out now. I just gotta super spread it out because it dripped down the canvas and I don't want it to do that. So. We got our, so we got our paint just like that. Now we're going to add the light brown. So the light brown is gonna come right here, but we're not gonna take it all the way down. We're gonna add another color mix to it just to give it that super 3D texture because we do want it to pop a little bit, you know? So we got our second brown, which is a lighter brown. And this one is kind of reddish, but that's okay if you blend it with the other brown, it should look good. If you look at a table, you can see that like the table is not all like the same one color. It's a bunch of different colors and greens and it's really cool to look at the stuff that people can create because it's like fascinating. You're like, how do you do that? So we're just getting it all the way across and I don't like how red it is necessarily so I'm just going to add a little bit of my dark brown color just to make it blend a little bit better but you can do whatever color you want if you want to do one color all the way down that's great you do you man all right so now we are going to add some dark brown to the canvas. We're just gonna do one dot here and dot here and a dot here. And now we're going to take this unbleached titanium, which is basically a light yellow, like a straw color. And we're going to add two dots, one in between these two and one in between these two. If you don't have this color, you can add a little bit of yellow or whatever you want. And again, your painting doesn't have to match mine. And just go ahead and mix it like that straight across the canvas. Just so you get actually like uneven like blend. You don't want just one solid color. You want them to kind of give it like a grainy texture because that is the way tables look. They're kind of different shades and they look different all the way across. I'm gonna get some water on my brush, pat it off, and come down here, 
just like that. Now this table looks dope already. One thing that we're going to keep in mind today is we're going to shade under the grapes. And so you don't want the table to be too dark, but you don't want it to be too light as well. You want it to be a nice little mixture just so we have enough space to give some shading and shadows. All right, so that is our table. So we're gonna stop on the brown color. We're just gonna go ahead and rinse this brush off. Now, the technique that I'm gonna be using today is a little bit different just so we can get some different like, textures and different looks. So I'm actually, I have a paper towel for my grape bunches. And so go ahead, stop this video and go get a paper towel. All right, so I am doing tight little circles on my towel just to give me that edge. And I ripped mine in half and then folded it in half. Okay, so I got my paper towel and I rolled it up really tight to make it like a circle for our grape bunches. And now if you look at a grape bunch, you realize that they're not all the same color. We're gonna start with our purple grape bunches. We're gonna do two, green and purple. And we're gonna do our light purple, which is kind of a pinky purple, and our dark purple. And somewhere in between, we're gonna blend the colors a little bit. So I got my paper towel and I'm gonna dip it into the color and see how it kind of soaks that up. So we're gonna start at one spot with one little grape and then I'm gonna just kind of add little grapes in kind of the same motion. You know, it's not gonna be perfect but we do want it somewhere close. And so this gives the grapes like kind of a cool like 3D look and it gives them a little bit of a different texture than we normally do if we would just like smooth out paint. So, just like that. And if you want, you can do a little twist with it and that should give it like a little uh, more of a circular motion. All right, so now we're gonna get my other purple, which is more of a deeper bluish purple versus a reddish purple. And if you want to make purple and you don't have it, then go ahead and um, add blue and red together and that'll get you a nice purple color. So I just went ahead and I ripped off the magenta color from my paper towel. I'm just gonna fluff it back up and that'll give me my other grape color. So it's already a new start. We don't have to wash it off or anything. So we're gonna do the same thing we did for the other one coming back in, and you're just gonna fill in the gaps that you didn't get before. So we're just gonna do the little grape circles all the way up. And if the brown color is affecting the way that your paint is going on, go ahead and let it dry first. And then come back with your paint so you can pause the video if you need to or whatever. So you wanna leave a little bit of space in between your grapes because they're not all like one giant grape. They're a bunch of individuals, right? And so you don't want them to all look like one grape color, especially on the um, table, they'll kind of like start to look all the same. You don't wanna do it. You can leave some of them a little bit farther apart than others. You can have some of them touching, some of them not touching anymore. All depends on how you're feeling. And if you want to add some color to the other grapes, you can do that. Add some different color. Mix some of the colors together if you want. Uh, but that is our first grape bunch and y'all this looks great. So we're gonna go ahead, put the paper roll down, get our tiny brush, come back to this dark brown color because grapes do have stems when they're on a bunch, right? And so we're going to give it a little stem. And we're just gonna start at the top or wherever you want and just give it a little stem, just like that. 
it's basically a line and you can make it a little bit bigger at the top if you want a little bit square and you can add little lines throughout like the grapes if you want to make them like look like they're all connected through the stem which kind of just gives it a different look right you can come down here add our little stems down here just like that um, we're gonna have leaves on the grapes, but we're not gonna add those until after we do the second grape bunch. So what we're gonna do is we're going to switch over to the green grape bunch. And I have three different green shades for this one because it's a little bit more of a, um, cause it's just got a little more like variance. To, that's not a word. <laughs> We just have a little more options with the grapes um, for my paint kit. So we're going to take the dark green, the medium green, and then the light green. And then we're gonna get our paper towel roll. And then we're gonna get our paper towel roll and start with the dark green. And I'm gonna do this one directly opposite the other purple one. Cause I don't want it exactly the same, but I don't want it too different, you know? And so these aren't too, too round, but they're also not just lines. We want them kind of round because grapes are round. And we want to make sure we show that. Next, we're going to get our medium color and we're going to dip into that all over. The medium color is more of an actual grape color. And if you want, you can just go ahead and alternate in between all of the colors and get all of those like different spaced out or you can just do what I'm doing and do most of them at one time just to get different like look I want to make sure that I have all of mine spaced out right and that they're all different and they're not all just like the same color like in a row all right so last color I'm gonna get my bright green that one was really big great it's a big great it's okay and they can all be different sizes that's the fun part they don't have to be the same at all to be super different. You can add little grapes in between if you want. Those little grapes are like super sour, especially on like green grape bunches, you know? All right, I'm gonna add one or two more down here. All right, so we got our green grape bunch done. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the purple. We're gonna add our little stem to it with our dark brown. And this stem is a little different. It's gonna come from this side actually and go in like that. And I'm just using a tiny brush for this. It doesn't need to be a big brush. And not all the grapes need to be like connected to it. It can be all kinds of like different ways if you want. They don't have to be connected at all. You can leave them all alone if you want. I just think the little connections kind of look a little bit different than you normally would. So be a little bit cool. Give it a little bit more of a realistic look since we're doing such a blatantly abstract color, right? Or style. All right, so we got our two great bunches and now we're going to add some shadowing under it. Um, I'm actually going to touch up this purple bunch before we do that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm just coming back over these, make them super bright, it's super obvious that they're here. It's like, hey, party, right? We wanna make sure that all of the stuff is like popping. Like you wanna see it, you wanna know it's there. 
Um, so now we're going to add some shadowing. We're going to take our... Pause. Can you give me that black? So we're going to take our dark brown and we're going to get a little bit of black actually I know. Super crazy. And we are going to get just a tiny, tiny bit because we don't need a lot, but we already have the dark brown on the canvas. <clears throat> and so we want to make sure that we do use our shading a little bit differently. We don't want it to all just look the exact same because that is not the point. We want it to all pop and be a little bit 3D, a little bit different because everything is unique and special and we want to make sure we show that. Okay. So I'm just taking my mini brush and I'm blending a little bit of black into my dark brown to just make it a little bit darker. Alright, so I'm taking my tiny brush and I'm just going to go in little loops actually under these grape bunches or the grapes to show where like they are and I kind of just shake it back and forth a tiny bit to give it more of a shadowy look versus a straight line look because you don't want it to look super like straight line you want it to be a shadowy look versus just a line around that defeats the purpose of having a shadow and so you might as well just draw with a different color if you're going to do that Alright, so we got our shadowing on the underside, and that's because our light is coming down from here. And so I'm going to come back over these and blend them out into this, like so. It's okay if you can't see it like a lot, a lot. It's just important that it's there, and you can see it a little bit. So we're just going to go over the grapes that are all on the table. Just like that, so you can tell that they're different and separate from the table. But not too different. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. Be right back. Alright, so I just went ahead and I added a couple shadows like in between and stuff just to give it a little bit of a different look. So I think it'd be really cool to have like a little single grape rolling away. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my little grape that's rolling away. We're going to add a little, another one actually over here. Right by them. They're best friends. Just like that, we're going to add a little bit of shading under them. Just because we want to stay consistent, right? throughout the whole thing. Make sure that you stay consistent. Just like that. Super easy, super fun. We got our little bunch of grapes. And it really tells a story. It tells the party and that there's food there and that people are enjoying themselves because it's not a whole full bunch of grapes. People have already started eating them and had it, having a lot of fun. So this is our party seat. And this is our banquet feast. I want to remind you all that you are invited to the kingdom of heaven. And that that is so important for you to remember because that is for everyone. Everyone is invited. So I love you guys so, so much. And I'm so grateful that y'all joined me today. And I'll see you next week on Earth AG. Bye.